Hey everybody, this is Mr. Math Blog, and this lesson is uh, word problems. You guys applying rational number operations, so we'll do some problem solving skills here. So, there's our common course strand for our most awesome teachers, and our question is, how do we use different forms of rational numbers, which are fractions and decimals, um, and strategically choose to, uh, our tools to solve some problems? So I have several examples here, or we have several examples. So um, we need to check for reasonableness of answers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so even though we understand how to solve some problems, sometimes we make careless errors. I make careless errors all the time, as you've seen. Um, and our answers don't make any sense in terms of the problem. So we should always check our answers just to make sure that they, they fit the problem and that they're reasonable. So here's an example. So John is hanging a picture in this room right here. He wants to center it horizontally uh, on the wall. So the picture is 32 and one half inches long and the wall is 120 and three fourths inches long. So here's our picture right here. So 32 and a half and the wall goes all the way across 120 and three fourths right there. How far from each edge of the wall? So how far over here and how far over here should he place the picture? He wants to have it centered. So they're supposed to be equal places right there. So real quick, you guys, we're going to take this length and we're going to subtract this length. And then we'll cut it in half to find out which side it's going to be on right there. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and get started here. Just slide that up. So let's find the total length of the wall that's not covered by the picture. So we're going to subtract those guys. All right. Now, remember back from a few grades ago, uh, before we subtract fractions, we can subtract these whole numbers right here, but we have to get common denominators here, which hopefully you guys can see that both of these go into four. So we only have to change this one. So I'm going to multiply this by 2 over 2, which is multiplying it by 1. So this is going to become 2 fourths. So 120 and 3 fourths minus 32 and 2 fourths. Okay, makes sense? Now we can go ahead and subtract 120 minus 32. Okay, I know 120 minus 30 is 90, so minus 2 more is 88. So 120 minus 32 is 88. 3 fourths minus 2 fourths is 1 fourth, so we get 88 and 1 fourth. Okay, now we need to find the length of the wall on each side of the picture, okay? So this length and this length, they're equal to each other, and, they're, and that's the 88 and 1 fourth. So we're going to take half of that, okay? Now, uh, so I can take half of 88 reasonably easy. That's 44. What's half of a fourth, you guys? Half of a fourth is an eighth. So half of this uh, mixed number right here is 44 and 1 8 right there, okay? So that would be our answer right there. So John should place the picture. Did I uh, put picture? So sorry if there's one of my errors. Picture, let's fix that. Uh, uh, 44 and 1 8 inches from each edge of the wall. Okay, so let's check the answer for reasonableness, okay? so. Uh, now that should say picture right there. Let's get that fixed here. I know I messed up on that last slide, but that's okay. I'll get it later. All right. Um, <clears throat> okay, so um, uh, check for reasonableness. Okay, so let's just do some quick checks, you guys. The wall is about um, uh, is about 120 inches, okay? We're just going to round 120 and 3 fourths to 120 inches. And we'll round this to about 30 inches right there. So 120 minus 30 is going to get us 90 on each side right there. Okay, so if we do 90 on each side and then take half of that, you guys, that's going to give us four, about 45 inches. Now that's close to our answer, uh, which was, uh, what was our answer? It's 44 and 1 eighth, I think, right there, right? Yeah, I've got it. Got it crossed off right there, sorry. 44 and 1 eighth. There we go, sorry. So there is our true answer, which is close to 45, so, so it's going to be a reasonable answer right there, okay? So our answer is reasonable because it's close to our estimate. So it looks like we did it correct, all right. Now probably you don't have to check for reasonableness on all of them, but just kind of be mentally aware. Does it fit the problem? You know, I have kids. We do investments, you guys, and so uh, when we get to um, uh, in my in my integrated math one class, and we're doing uh, exponential investments, and kids, and you know, they'll invest fifty dollars, and then at the end of six months, they get a a grand average of almost a half a million dollars. Well, that doesn't seem right because if that was true, everybody'd be investing that. So just if you get an answer that doesn't fit the problem. Um, then go back and find your mistake. I make them all the time. So does your teacher. 
So a 30 minute TV program consists of three commercials, each that are two and a half minutes long, and four equal length commercial uh, entertainment sections. Okay, so the three equal commercials are separating up the TV program into four equal length uh, segments. So how long is each segment right there? All right, well first, let's take off the three commercials to see how many minutes are in the whole entertainment system. So three times two and a half, we're gonna take that off of 30. I'm gonna convert two and a half to an improper fraction. Do you guys remember how to do that? So if we, if we did that, we do this denominator times the big number, two times two, and then add the top number. So if two times two is four, plus one is five, so this becomes five halves. So we'll do 30 minus 3 times 5 halves gets us uh, 30 minus 15 halves. And I'll change 30 to 60 over 2 to get common denominators. 60 over 2 minus 15 over 2 is 45 over 2. Now I can convert that right there to a mixed number, but I'm going to need that uh, to, to continue working with this problem. So I can convert that to uh, 22 and a half minutes uh, total segments, but we're going to have to convert it back to that anyways. That's not the answer. That's how much the entertainment is when we take out the three commercials, okay? So now we'll take that total time and divide that by four equal segments, okay? So divided by four is divided by four over one. So we're going to invert and multiply it and make it uh, uh, times 1 over 4. Remember, keep, flip, change, KFC. And then so the nothing cancels, so 45 times 1 is 45. 2 times 4 is 8. Now this is the time to convert it into a mixed number. So 5 and 5 eighths. So I'm going to say each entertainment section is going to be 5 and 5 eighths minutes long. Gosh, not even 6 uh, minutes long and you get another commercial. That's two and a half minutes, so it kind of drive you crazy. So anyway, so uh, we have solved problems using integers, positive and negative fractions, and positive and negative decimals too. So sometimes problems will involve all of those, like what's coming up here. Okay, so Elena uses one and one fourth cups of flour for each batch of blueberry muffins that she makes. She has a five pound uh, has a five pound should say bag of flour that costs four dollars ninety nine cents and contains 76 one quarter cup servings. Yeah, I know, I know. So how many batches can Elena make if she's using all, all the flour? So how much does the flour of one batch cost? Okay, there's a lot of information here. So what we first ought to do is uh, uh, recognize what we have in this. So each batch uses one and one uh, quarts uh, or cups of flour right there, okay? And then so one and one cups of flour and then a five pound bag the five pounds we don't need we don't need that at all we just need to know that that bag contains 76 one quarter cups and that bag costs uh, $4.99 okay extraneous this is extraneous information we don't need it right there okay they're just throwing that in there to throw you off we don't need that Okay, so 76 one quarter cup servings of flour cost that $4.99. That's that bag of flour right there. Okay, so the number of cups of flour that's in the bag. Well, if there's 76 one quarter cups, then we multiply 76 times a quarter. And this will tell me how many cups are in the bag, okay? Because remember, 76, um, uh, if it's one quarter uh, of a cup right there, then if we um, uh, divide that by 4, that'll tell us how many cups are in there. So there's 19 cups in there. 76 divided by 4 is 19. Okay, now, remember, um, each batch uses 1 and 1 fourth of a cup. So if we have 19 cups all together, then we're going to take the total cups, which is 19, and divide it by uh, how much cups of flour for each batch. So, so the total cups in the flour is the 19 cups, and we're going to divide it by... The one and one fourth cups of flour right there, okay? All right, so for each batch right there. So there it is right there. Going to change that to an improper fraction and then uh, invert and multiply. So nothing cancels, you guys. So I know 20 times 4, or sorry, yeah, 20 times 4 is 80. So 19 times 4 is uh, 76. So we get 76 fifths batches. Well, how many batches is that? That's 15.2 batches. Okay, this is where we got to use a little bit of logic, you guys. Um, I'm just going to slide that up right there. So uh, Elena can't make 0.2 of a batch. Besides, in the recipe, it says there's a picture in the recipe, and it says each batch needs one egg. And we can't uh, cut one egg up into 0.2 right there. So, so what we have to do is cut off the decimal portion of this so she can make 15 batches, a total of 15 batches. 
Now remember, the bag of flour costs $4.99, and if that $4.99 bag of flour, we can make 15 batches, then each bag is going to be uh, the $4.99 divided by 15, which is picking up a calculator, 0.299 is some change, so about 30 cents uh, each batch of muffins is going to cost to make. Yummy, uh, nothing like muffins and a nice cup of coffee in the morning, so... So let's check this for reasonableness. So 76 quarts is close to 80 quarts, quarter cups, sorry, did I say quarts? Quarter cups is close to 80 quarter cups. And then so quarter cups, if I divide that by four, that's about 20 cups worth right there. And each batch uses about one cup. It was one and a fourth. So we'll just say one cup. So there's enough flour for about 20 batches. And um, uh, the bag, uh, the, not the batch, but the bag, that should say bag right there. The bag costs about... Um, uh, five bucks. It was four ninety nine right there. That should say bag, not batch. Um, uh, and so, so then we can we can conclude that our answer is close to our estimate because uh, we got I think it was twenty nine cents right there. So anyway, so it's close enough to our estimate right there. Let me bag. So anyways, I send these lessons to teachers in my district. So. Here's another one, you guys. I know you love it. So a four-pound bag of sugar. I know you guys don't. So wait till you get to uh, Integrated Math 1 and we start doing these groovy things called proofs. Um, some kids like them a lot. Some kids don't. So just hang in there. Don't say I can't do word problems because once you do that, you put a wall up and I can't help you. So or neither can your teacher. So at least try. Try to uh, decipher some of the information. And if you just try, give yourself a chance. Uh, I promise, um, uh, you, you won't get good at it right away, but you get better at it. It's like working out. You don't get strong right away. Or you're practicing for basketball. you got to do the drills, do the drills, do the drills, do the drills, and finally you guys start getting better at it. So um, getting better at math is the same. Just keep practicing. Don't give up. All right, so sorry. There's my little cheerleading uh, corner right there. So a four-pound bag of sugar contains 454 one teaspoon servings and cost three dollars forty nine cents okay so a batch of muffins uses three quarters cups of sugar all right and they give us a hint down at the bottom that one cup is forty eight teaspoons okay so how many batches can you make if you use all the sugar what is the cost of sugar for each batch okay this is kind of the same sort of problem so each batch uses three quarters cups of sugar and each cup is forty eight teaspoons so uh, so three quarters cups, we've got to find three quarters of 48. So each batch uses three quarters of 48. So the of is like saying times in math. You ever see the word of for math? It means times. So three fourths times 48. Uh, three times 48 is 144. Give me that little sweetie. I've got little Lucy here who wants me to toss the ball. Uh, so 144 divided by 4 gets us about 30, it gets us 36 teaspoons. So that's how much each batch will use, 36 teaspoons of, of, um, of uh, sugar. Okay, so then um, we have, what do we have? We have uh, the bag. Uh, remember, this 4-pound bag, that 4 does not need it right there. This is what's needed, the 454 teaspoons right there. So if each batch takes 36 teaspoons, then we'll take this and divide it by that. That'll tell us, um, uh, let's see, uh, that's going to tell us how, uh, how, much, um, how many batches of uh, muffins we can make with that given amount of sugar right there. So 454 divided by 36 is about 12.65. Okay, now we can't make a 0.65 of a batch right there, so we can only make 12 batches, okay? Now if that bag of sugar costs this much right there, and we can make that many batches, then each batch is going to cost this amount divided by this amount right there, okay? So when we do that, you guys, we get about 29 cents, okay? So for each batch, it's going to cost us about 29 cents. All right, let's see. i got one more. Okay, so uh, the depth of Golden Trout Lake has been decreasing in recent years. Two years ago, the depth of the lake was 186.73 meters. Since then, the depth has been changing uh, at an average rate of minus one and three quarters uh, percent per year. So what is the depth today? Okay, so remember, this was two years ago. So we're going to do this decrease twice right there to get today's depth right there okay all right so let's go ahead and do that so let's first convert that fraction into a decimal so three fourths is 0 0.75 so negative one and three fourths is negative 1.75 then we'll convert this decimal into i'm sorry this percent into um 
into a, a, a decimal, okay? So remember when we change percents into decimals, in order to drop this percent off, we move this decimal over two places to the left. So one, two, and there's a space in there, and that's why that's why we have this, this zero in right here. Okay, so negative uh, 1.75% is equivalent to negative 0.0175. Okay. So now to find the depth after one year. Okay, so two years ago, here was the depth. Okay, so what we're going to do is take off this amount right here. So we're going to multiply this times this, and that'll tell us how much it went down. Okay, so it went down negative 3.27 meters. So it's that much, that many meters lower. So what's the depth then after one year? We're going to subtract those. Okay, so when we subtract those, that's the depth after one year. Okay, and then so after two years, we just take off that negative uh, 0 0.0175 again, and uh, it's going to go down an additional 3.21 meters. So, so the depth after two years becomes 180.25 meters right there. All right, so the original depth we're just checking was about 190. Remember, it was uh, 186, so I'm just rounding up to nice whole numbers right there just to, to make it easier to can get us an estimate right here. So the depth changed about 2%. Remember, it's 1.75, negative 2%. So after two years, um, uh, 0 0.02 times 190 is 3.8. That's how much it changes. So, so it's going to change about 4 meters per year or about 8 meters in 2 years. So if I take off the 8 meters from the 190, we get 182. And that's close to our, our true answer of 180.25. So, so it's a reasonable answer. All right, you guys, I hope that makes sense. And, and take care and don't give up.